right, first, um, welcome Orlando. If I'm saying your name wrong, just correct me. Yo, Orlando. Yo, yo, Orlando. Okay. Um, all right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, calling for the planning board meeting for Tuesday, February 7th. First, I have a quick opening statement. And uh, my understanding, our meetings will resume in April in person. So um, this, I will read this statement, February and March, and then April, we look forward to seeing everyone in person. This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer functions. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay, so roll call. Larry Hassan? Here. James Sweeney? Here. Tony Gonzalez here. Um, so Rob, you just want to review again, we have just three plant board members, so. Yeah, uh, Yolando is here for um, just uh, viewing purposes. He hasn't joined the board yet. Uh, so with a three member board, we can hear subdivisions, um, but we cannot hear the return to CBA and um, site plan approval. Okay. So um, also want to let everybody know that our April meeting is going to be, and Evan, what is the date? April? 13th. Yes, 13th. Thursday, April 13th. Okay. Correct. GAR room? Yes, sir. Yes. Actually looking forward to be back in person. All right, we will um, start with the acceptance of the last month's meeting. Is there a motion? Motion to accept last month's meeting. Uh, minutes, excuse me. Second. Minutes, yes, thank you. Um, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Um, the agenda changes for this evening. So all these return to ZBAs will be continued. So 1449 Main Street continued to next month's meeting. 48 North Pearl Street, the same. 124 Bradley Ave, the same. And 159 North Main Street continued to next month's meeting. <clears throat> As we scare Yolando away. All right. Uh, first up, we have one added ANR. Evan? Yes, it's uh, 46 Montello Street. It's um, the old D'Angelo's and the Dunkin' Donuts. They are just adjusting a lot line between the two parcels. Everything looks good, so no issues. Okay. Um, roll call. Or not roll call, sorry. Motion to accept. Mo motion to accept. Second. Second. All right, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. And we have one lot release. Yep, uh, two lots on Cypress Drive, lot one and lot two. Um, they are going well. Everything that they need to do to release those lots is good. They're still holding on to three more <coughs> for the uh, final completion of everything. But um, up to this point, yeah, they're fine for those two lots, one and two. And Madam Chair, we do have a preliminary as built that shows that the uh, road base is in, as are the curbs. Um, and uh, underground utilities are in place. So mm -hmm. we feel confident that uh, the only thing after construction uh, of the remaining houses will be to repave and put the top coat on, um, on the street. Excellent. Okay, good, thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Monica Gonzalez, yes. Thank you. 
Moving on, street acceptance. All right, this is pretty straightforward as well. On um, Bud Avenue, it's right next to Brockton Hospital. They are going to accept it from a private way to a public way uh, in one of those little neighborhoods. Excellent. Okay. Yep. Motion. Motion to accept. Street Second. acceptance of Bud Ave. Second. Okay, thank you. Roll call, Larry mm -hmm. Son. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. And speaking of Brockton Hospital, I mean, it's just terrible what happened there today. So thoughts are with them. I hear it's going to be a lot long road to recovery. So any support yes. we can offer them, we need to reach out. <clears throat> okay, so moving on to our uh, short agenda this evening, we have two site plan approvals. Um, the first one being 41 to 53 Arlington Street. Applicant is Steve Torrey with ET Engineering representing. Okay. Is Jim Burke representing Mr. Torrey? No, uh, I don't see Steve Torrey on oh, here McCluskey. Either. Oh, there's John McCluskey. I'm sorry, John. I see you there now. And you should be moving on to his panelists now. And if there's anybody else with John McCluskey, please raise your hand so we can see you. I see Azu, I got uh, him. Is, uh, is Azu here? Yes. I just moved him. He's coming in now. Okay. Okay. Azu, do you want to make the presentation? He might still be connecting. Yeah. Uh, what, what this one's 53, Rob. Uh, is this the Sims office? I, I, I get the addresses flip, flip flop. Yes, it is. Yeah, and and you received the form B. The yes, we did. Thank you very much. I don't think there's anything significant other than Dewey Stone, who was certainly a significant individual. I don't think there's any real significance on the house. I mean, he lived here. Oh, no, no. Uh, we just wanted it documented before it, it happened. Right, right. That's all. Azu, yes. are you available to join? Yeah, yes, he we're, here, we're here. Um, I'm here with uh, Steve uh, Torrey, the uh, owner and the applicant. Uh, well, the, able, the able Rob May, would you be able to share your file for us? Um, I'm going to ask Evan because I didn't download it, but I think he has access to it. All right, there we go. Can you Excellent. see that? All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Evan. You both rock, I can tell you that. The, uh, so uh, thank you, um, uh, Rob, and thank you, Evan, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Chair, and members of the uh, board. My name is Azwe Teniru, uh, uh, the engineer for the project. I have with me here Mr. Steve Torrey, and I believe attorney uh, McCloskey has already been introduced. He is no stranger to this great city of champions. Um, so what we have is uh, uh, what we basically have is a four sheet plan. Uh, we had gone to a tech review and there was certain there were very good and uh, cogent, uh, insightful uh, comments that were made uh, to our plans about to reduce the uh, overburdening of our plans. So we separated the two sheets into four. And so what you have here is the uh, existing conditions. Uh, basically showing uh, the two existing uh, buildings and uh, uh, and a drainage uh, easement that uh, traverses the property uh, from the northwest and going southeasterly and then out to um, uh, out to uh, Arlington Street. And uh, the second she uh, so and by the way, before we get there, we did some test pits. Those little lower uh, polka dots that you see, four of them, are the test pits that we did uh, to uh, verify the location of the uh, drainage, uh, as well as uh, uh, verify the uh, 
type of uh, soils that we have in terms of our uh, for our drainage design. So uh, Evan, if you'll go to uh, sheet number two, uh, that basically shows you the overall site layout and the uh, uh, proposed activities. Uh, what I will say, if you look at the uh, structures that are highlighted, if you will, in blue, uh, those represent uh, the proposed units. Uh, it's a total of... Um, uh, a total of uh, 14 units uh, that we're proposing. Uh, the what you, see, what you see, bless you, what you see as orange uh, is a proposed uh, stormwater recharge system that has been designed uh, to uh, to uh, satisfy the uh, requirements of the uh, DEP stormwater management guidelines as well as the city's uh, MS4 ordinance, uh, which the city promulgated uh, consistent with the, uh, the, um, the uh, EPA uh, stormwater uh, quality requirements. What you see in, in gray shading is the uh, parking. Uh, we uh, meet and satisfy the parking requirements. Uh, we have a dumpster that is proposed for uh, trash uh, as a receptacle for trash uh, pick up and it's uh, enclosed. Uh, over to the left uh, of my notes is the uh, uh, the zoning criteria and the dimensional requirements that shows you uh, what is required and the uh, zoning elements, the minimum lot area requirement, the minimum frontage. Uh, if you look at the uh, minimum area based on the, uh, what we are proposing, uh, the required is uh, one acre. We have uh, a nice little acre, which is uh, 43,560 square feet. Uh, the existing uh, square footage is 47,821 square feet. Uh, the minimum frontage required is 100. Uh, we have existing as 252 plus uh, feet. Uh, for the setbacks, the front setback of a structure, is 35 feet, uh, existing right now is 50, and we're proposing 35, uh, which is in conformance to the zoning. The setbacks, minimum is 20 feet. On the right side, uh, what we what is existing is 41.7, and we're proposing six, uh, 96.4 feet. On the left side, required is 20, existing is 39.3, and we're proposing exactly 20 feet. Uh, the rear requirement is 50. The existing is 71.7. And what we propose is 71.8. So you can see that uh, it uh, conforms to uh, the dimensional requirements uh, of the city. If you drop down below, uh, <coughs> I, I show the uh, uh, parking calculation. Um, and uh, well, the proposed uh, parking is, uh, required is 40. We're proposing 40. One of the comments that the uh, director uh, aptly uh, noted is that we did not uh, specify which of those parking spots will be handicapped. And so we have identified our, uh, based on the uh, location of the buildings, we have two parking spaces uh, proposed uh, for the handicap accessible. And that it will be a parking spot number 33, as well as parking spot number 40. The area that you see in green uh, are the uh, areas for landscaping. And uh, the landscaping, it's uh, if you look at the uh, minimum required, if we were to go back, Evan, please, uh, to the uh, zoning table, uh, the minimum green space that is required is 25%. Uh, the existing is 50, and based on the proposed use, uh, we are proposing a 34%. So that is almost uh, 10%, almost 10%, 9% exact above the minimum required. And so we have uh, uh, shown some, uh, one of the comments that were made um, related uh, to uh, what we feature for landscaping. 
and assume uh, most of uh, the members of the board and the city officials will uh, uh, ascertain. Uh, the fact is, uh, Mr. S uh, Tory has been very, uh, very good steward of the uh, projects that he has developed across the city. And uh, so he is proposing uh, a landscaping scheme that will be commensurate with the uh, required uh, uh, landscaping uh, of the city. Uh, the uh, lighting will be built and mounted and uh, water and sewer will be individual services to the uh, proposed units. And, um, and uh, what we've done is hatch uh, the water in blue uh, uh, color line work and then the sewer uh, in green, and that is the, basically consistent with the uh, city, uh, with the state um, environmental code, how they like to see our utilities uh, delineated. Uh, if you look at, if you would uh, look at the uh, for, for traffic circulation, uh, we propose our uh, one way in and one way out, and uh, that is uh, very uh, uh, consistent. With our, and similar to what we did for Mr. Tari on uh, Warren Ave, which the city approved and the planning board approved it. And uh, uh, it's all built. And uh, uh, I'm here to report to you that that project came out exactly the way it was proposed. And uh, the uh, tenants, as well as the unit, some of the uh, unit owners are very, very satisfied with the way things are run there. And so that will be similar to what is uh, what would be done here. Uh, Evan, if you will go to the next sheet. Okay, so uh, uh, in line with uh, what the director uh, and, uh, and the planning staff commented, this is a result of that. We segregated some of the uh, information so it's a little bit easier to, uh, uh, to see. And so uh, this plan here shows a little bit of the landscaping, but we'll, the next sheet will uh, uh, show in more detail. But you can see some of the uh, bushes as well as major trees that are proposed. Those are uh, show uh, in that colors. And then you can see the blue line that traverses our, uh, along the, uh, um, the northerly uh, building and it comes down, traverses westerly, and then uh, down southerly on on the uh, left side of the uh, westerly unit, uh, westerly five unit, and then uh, you can see the sewer uh, uh, to the uh, on the green to the right side or the east side of the westerly five unit, so that the sewer is separated from the uh, water. And then you look at the uh, easterly unit; uh, you can see the uh, green. Uh, line for the sewer and those we have individual sewers going into those units as well as the water and so uh, I uh, uh, you know uh, I, I know we uh, uh, kick and scream when we receive comments of, uh, but these comments actually uh, help uh, tell the story so again uh, uh, to Rob and uh, Evan uh, I gotta confess that I was kicking and they were complaining but the uh, comments actually <laughs> proved that very useful in being able, that, that way I can actually explain the plan. So I appreciate that. Um, and uh, what we're looking at is the drainage. We are going to have uh, a drainage easement uh, proposed to properly identify the route of the uh, drainage. Uh, the city right now has an easement but it's what I call a prescriptive easement. There is really no document uh, that uh, memorializes uh, the uh, easement. And so what we are uh, proposing as part of this project is to actually prepare an easement plan uh, as well as combining, because these are two separate parcels. So we will have, if you will, what we call an 81X plan uh, prepared uh, for recording of the registry. Um, and so, um, and then as well as I show the easement so that there's an actual definition of the easement for the city. And then lastly, but not the least, <coughs> even if you go to the next sheet, 
uh, uh, and incidentally, uh, if you will have look over to the left side um, of the plan, thank you, Evan. You can see those are trees that we're proposing as well as the bushes. You can see the buildings, the, <clears throat> the existing buildings on the other project that um, Mr. Tori did. And you can see that uh, he doesn't skimp on the uh, bushes. You can see in the fog. In the foreground there, in front of the building, you can see the shrubs, and then you can see the size of the trees that he he put up to uh, uh to balance to balance out the buildings. So, uh, Evan, if you would go to the, uh, uh, I, I, best, I, I believe this is the last sheet that we have that to show because uh, it's uh, as you say, uh, pictures tell a, pictures of uh, photos are worth a thousand words. And um, besides that, I think uh, it's a great project, uh, consistent with uh, what's been done before on Warren Ave and what we did on uh, Falmouth Ave. And, and so we would uh, entertain any comments or questions that the board may have. And we uh, ask that the board uh, approve the project so that we can get uh, moving uh, with the next uh, level of activities that we Evan. Evan, by any chance, do you have the elevation drawings? Uh, I think it's just what's on here. Ah, okay. Uh, just, you know, for the board's edification, we do have elevation drawings. Um, this is a neighborhood with a lot of historic fabric. Um, 41 uh, Arlington is a beautiful old home. Unfortunately, this property can't be saved. Uh, it's um, it, it's deteriorated to a point that it really does make sense to bring it down. Um, the architect that Mr. Um, uh, what is been working with Tory. is um, oh, Mr. Tory. I'm sorry. Um, excuse me, Steve uh, has uh, done a, a wonderful rendering of of this building, and it fits the uh, architectural style of the neighborhood and will be a wonderful addition to our community. Thank you, Robin. So have the new, the proposed drainage, ease, drainage easement been established? And is Azul aware it needs to be recorded before the project completion? Yeah, this is John McCleskey. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. So yes, we have discussed it. Uh, we are going to, I believe, Azu, correct me if I'm wrong, we're going to establish a separate plan for the easement, and uh, we're going to uh, create a document, uh, and, and we'll get those reports in the registry of you. Okay, thank you. And thank you for the details on the landscaping. I don't have questions there. The other board members might, but um, for the fire access, <clears throat> could you provide details to Deputy Williams to see if he has questions? Um, uh, I, I will let our, our, our Mr. Williams. Our, I don't want to like. I don't like putting words in, in people's mouths. But uh, I don't think I would receive any of a negative of a adverse comment. But the uh, template that we use, I will show that uh, with the uh, one way circulation, uh, that uh, that's adequate access. Uh, but I like to uh, yeah. uh, add add and speak to it. Deputy Chief. Thank you. Um, so I looked through the plans that were online real quick. Um, I didn't see the fire truck plan. Do you have one, Azul? Uh, yes. Yeah, so what happened was uh, the uh, the uh, uh, it was, the plan was so busy, and then uh, we started uh, editing and uh, in an attempt to uh, make sure that we in an attempt to make sure that we uh, meet the deadline, we filed the drawings, but then. Uh, when I separated the sheets, of, uh, that kind of, uh, if you are familiar with how the, how CAD files work, uh, we create almost like your GIS. We do them, we do them in layers, and uh, uh, that layer fell off the uh, grid. And uh, my apologies for that, oh. but we can uh, certainly uh, 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 email it to you, uh, uh, showing that by itself. It's just yeah, that it, as long as it works, Azul, I'm good with it. Um, if you can email it to me in the morning, <clears throat> that's fine. Yeah, um, I understand how things can get lost. I'm actually a trained draftsman uh, by trade, so I un understand. Oh. Um, but as long as you um, 
as long as you uh, say it works, I, I trust you. And, um, you know, I miss, I know Mr. Tory uh, wouldn't, uh, you know, um, skimp on that. So uh, no. I'm good, Madam Chair. Right. And uh, uh, and uh, when you retire, now that you've let the you've let the cat out of the bag, when you retire, believe me, there will be a job for a retired uh, a firefighter that does drafting. That's that's a dying profession. Yeah. Yeah. Retired is retired. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for addressing his questions. What about the lighting? Can you just provide more details for that? Uh, yes. So, uh, Evan, if you will share that screen again. Uh, um, Sheet four. Yes, sir. Yeah, so so if you look at around the building, you will see the red, the red stars that are attached to the building, and that is exactly what we did on the other locations. So you can see the red stars of, uh, on each building, uh, one on each corner, and uh, on the uh, three uh, on the uh, uh, quadplex, you can see where we uh, uh, include them, and those are designed so that they don't cast. Of a light past the uh, 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 parking parking layout, so those are uh, strategically located. And uh, matter of fact, I would encourage anyone that wants to drive out to uh, go by uh, the the uh, the other units that we included the landscape to show you what the landscape would look like. The that same lighting, very very. Uh, uh, I forgot the term that they use, but you know, it's almost like a candle lit. It's well lit area, but it doesn't overpower the neighborhood. And that's and that's that's why we have it on the buildings as opposed to uh pole mounted. When you have them at pole, they hire the pole. And you know the typical height of our uh, uh, utility poles is such that uh it's almost 125 feet up in the air. That tends to cast more lumen past the uh, project boundaries. And so um, uh, that's why we have these, uh, the way we have them. Okay, thank you. I'll open it up to questions from other board members. I don't have any questions at this point that you haven't already asked or that he hasn't already answered. I think it's a solid plan. I, I <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't have any other questions either too. I've seen, um, I saw this at tech review and they've come a long way with tech review. I, I know they were aggravated walking out of tech review, but as, as you said, you know, it, it was helpful. So, um, I don't have any questions either. Thank you. Okay. So we'll open up to public comment. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in our audience, if you would like to make a comment or ask a question, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you move your cursor down there and hover over uh, the bottom, the uh, menu pops up and you'll see a hand raised like that. Um, you can use that or press star nine if you're on the phone. And Madam Chair, I do not see any hands raised at this time. Okay, so we'll move on. Is there a motion? So <clears throat> we have a motion to approve with standard conditions um, plus the following conditions, but I think we're going to have to edit some of them a little bit. So I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but the proposed drainage easement must be properly established and recorded before project completion. However, on the second area, they provided the landscaping and the lighting, but we still need fire access plans and reviewed by the planning board before uh, the final plans are signed. That makes sense. Sounds right. And second. Okay, roll call, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. <clears throat> Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Okay, thanks, Thank Robin. You. Thanks, Evan. And good thanks, Thank Isaiah. You. If you, Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night. Well, next on the agenda and last for this evening is a site plan approval for 137, 141, and 147 Main Street. 
CMK Development Partners is the applicant and J. Kane Holmgren is the representative. Uh, Madam Chair, before this gets rolling, I just want to say that um, the city is really excited about this project. We have been working with the current landowner and the future landowner for, um, oh, there he is, Mr. Kavanaugh. I'll promote him to panelist. Um, it has been a fantastic project. You'll see it when it comes up. Um, it's going to be a great addition to our downtown. And um, I can't wait for the groundbreaking and then the ribbon cutting. So I'll stop gushing at this point and let you carry on. All right, Scott, can you pull up your plans for us, please? Uh, pull up the plans, leave. Madam Chair, and then if I could just hand it over to Attorney Burke, he can get started on the presentation, if that is okay with you, Madam Chair. Absolutely, the seat is yours. There are the plans, Madam Chair. Go ahead, Attorney Burke. Thank you, and uh, Madam Chairwoman, members of the Planning Board, uh, it is absolutely my pleasure to uh, be here representing uh, Mr. Kavanaugh and CMK Development Partners. Uh, Jerry has been very actively involved in this project, as uh, Rob said, for a number of months, uh, meeting at all levels of the city uh, to uh, try to create a really dynamic project for what is a Vista Street in the Main Street, Brockton, uh, historically uh, a, a great location. And in terms of uh, a uh, transit-oriented project, it, it couldn't be cited in a better place. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Madam Chairwoman, this is a uh, application pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 40R uh, and the uh, comparable ordinance uh, from the city of Brockton as, as amended, uh, in which uh, we are seeking to be allowed to construct new dwellings, 99 units, uh, in uh, 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 with a, an affordable of 20%, which I believe uh, is a, a 20 units in this specific instance, in which we are seeking certain waivers, which I identified in my uh, outline to the board of July 21, uh, 1922. Hopefully members of the board have had occasion to review it uh, and I won't spend a lot of time on it, uh, but to skip uh, in terms of the relevant uh, matters of the uh, specific ordinance looks for the promotion of residential and mixed use development, uh, the continued development redevelopment of downtown Brockton, uh, the insurance of high quality characteristics and identity of downtown in terms of architecture, uh, diversified uh, housing stock, uh, and to generate positive tax revenue. This couldn't be uh, any better in terms of uh, hitting the nail on the head for the city. Uh, the developer uh, has great experience uh, in terms of mixed use project that were outlined uh, in my narrative uh, in, uh, in places such as uh, Weymouth, uh, uh, New Bedford, uh, Natick, uh, and they've also done uh, commercial construction uh, for uh, higher educational institutions in the past. They're well qualified to uh, handle the project. Uh, the, the plan uh, and, and the, the uh, uh, consultants uh, that he hired are exceptional. Scott is going to do the engineering and Kevin Patton has been uh, designing and redesigning uh, the project before you. And Kevin and BKA, as you know, have had their uh, fingerprints in just about every major project that's gone on in the downtown Brockton uh, at, under the uh, transit oriented development uh, you, you know, explosion. Uh, and Scott, likewise, uh, is extremely qualified to assist the board in designing a plan uh, that will meet the requirements of 40R. Uh, the historical significance of these structures are they actually uh, were part of the uh, original Cresby building in downtown Brockton. More recently, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Marians uh, have occupied the property, and in fact, the Marians are the current owners under a family trust. What uh, uh, we're looking for is to uh, uh, build the 99 units. Uh, we're gonna put 50 uh, parking spaces on the structure. Uh, we went to the Brockton Parking Authority and were able to secure a commit for up to 49 units. And uh, luckily, and it's and somewhat different from the mold, uh, those units are right at the site, both in the back and in the side. 
So when we talk about the utilization of a garage, the units that we are going to secure are, 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 are right next to and adjacent to the uh, physical uh, site and the facility. Couldn't be a better uh, uh, a transit oriented project. You're, you're, you're approximately 10 minutes away from the uh, uh, rail line, also uh, the same distance from uh, the transit uh, station bat. Uh, this project is not designed for families. Uh, this project is more designed for uh, couples and another or older uh, course of their years or younger individuals. Uh, and uh, it's, it's geared toward those uh, who do not primarily rely on motor vehicle for uh, their primary uh, uh, work uh, uh, needs. It's expected and it's hoped uh, that the majority of the residents will make use of the mass transit uh, which is a part of the uh, statutory requirement uh, that it have the facilities. Uh, also, in terms of our needs from uh, Brockton, uh, we are also having a first floor with mixed uh, use of a commercial space that uh, uh, Kevin will get into in far more detail than, than I am. We are asking for certain waivers. I outlined those waivers uh, on my uh, original plan and updated the waiver request uh, with the help of BAT's suggestion, uh, uh, beta, excuse me, beta's suggestion in a November the 8th, 2022 letter. In short, uh, we hope that this board will approve this project tonight. Uh, and if there are uh, pending any other comments from beta, that it would be approved so that we will comply with any other minor issues that uh, are raised. I think first, we probably want to hear from Scott because there are some major site work in town, and I'd appreciate it if he would take over. Thank you, Attorney Burke. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, uh, Scott Farrier, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, as Attorney Burke said uh, uh, in, in uh, Plan of May, said a, a pretty exciting project for us. We've been talking about this site for at least five years and, and probably longer uh, throughout City, City Hall. So. Uh, what we have is the three existing plots uh, that make up the Marion's property, the two existing plots uh, that have buildings on them, and then the third vacant lot uh, closest to West Elm Street. Our proposed plan uh, pretty much covers the entirety of those three lots. Uh, there isn't a heck of a lot left over. Uh, our main entrance to the building will be off of Main Street, the main pedestrian entrance. Our parking entrance will be off of L Street. Uh, Frederick Douglass is a one-way road off of Main Street. Uh, you would end up having to loop all the way down to Warren Ave, come down L Street, which is uh, also a one-way street, and enter our garage here off of L Street. As Attorney Burke said, we have 50 parking spaces within our parking garage. Uh, the access would be, uh, as I said, right here off of L Street, 50 spaces, the other 49 are off site. Uh, all of the utilities are available. We have our proposed water coming off of Main Street, our proposed, I'm just gonna flip the page so I can show you our proposed water coming off of Main Street, our proposed sewer tying into existing sewer on L Street, and our proposed drainage system will overflow into the municipal drainage system in L Street. Uh, as we mentioned in just about all of these projects, uh, the existing properties, certainly on, on Main Street, all of these commercial properties essentially have no on-site drainage and aren't in compliance with the DEP stormwater guidelines and the City of Brockton stormwater guidelines. By doing this project, it gives us the opportunity to bring the property uh, into conformance with those guidelines. Uh, because of that, we have this large drainage system proposed uh, in the middle of the of the lot area underneath the parking garage, uh, and that will handle the runoff uh, from the open space and also from the rooftop. So the rooftop, the open space uh, for the surface parking, all of that, uh, that rainfall will be handled uh, within this drainage system, uh, again, in compliance with all those guidelines. That's... Uh, that's really, well, I, I, I'll just quickly go. We, we had our second review from Beta, Madam Chair. They had a couple of items that they wanted us to address that I did address. Those are on the plans that we submitted to the board and that I'm showing you right now. 
uh, really minor issues. They wanted to add a catch basin right up here near L Street that I'm showing and increase the overflow uh, from a six inch pipe to an eight inch pipe. Uh, that's essentially the, the last remaining uh, couple of points that Beta had. We made those changes. We're uh, confident. We, we've talked to Beta and their review engineer on this project, Gary James, about it. He's uh, comfortable with what we've done. Uh, so we, we feel pretty good about uh, being in compliance with all their regulations. Uh, so having said all that, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm guessing nobody really cares all that much about my plans and they'd be much more excited about Kevin Patton's plan. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And if you're okay with it, Madam Chair, I'd like to let Kevin uh, take over and he can spend a couple of minutes showing you his plans. Just one, one second, Scott. You said the first comment from Beta was the catch basins. What was the second? The second comment. All right. The second comment was the overflow line, the drainage line. I had previously shown a six inch overflow. They wanted to increase it to an eight inch overflow. Uh, so that's this line right here that goes out from my drainage system out to L Street. Okay, thank you. And you're passing the seat to who? Passing the baton okay. to Kevin Patton from BKA. Yeah, Kevin Patton, I am the uh, project architect and I'm going to attempt to share my screen. And All right. So this is a rendering of the uh, proposed project. Uh, <coughs> the program is 99 residential units. It is four stories of residential over one story of ground floor uh, retail and parking. And this is a view of the building where we have uh, Main Street down at the bottom of the sheet, L Street extension on the right side, and then you can kind of see um, the neighbor works building peeking around the corner over here. So off of Main Street, we have a pedestrian uh, resident access near the middle of the building. And to the right of that is the um, retail cafe space. To the left of the residential access is amenity space for the residents. It also has its own entrance off of Main Street. The building materials are fiber cement. We're using a, a blended color for the primary material that's supposed to um, pick up the, the hues of the brick on Main Street. And then using a dark gray fiber cement to, um, to highlight some access, accent points on the building. The ground floor is mostly glass with a, uh, with a black aluminum frame. And then we have a dark color, dark gray to black uh, brick uh, working into some key points along the, uh, the storefront. We're also proposing to uh, do some hardscape and landscaping along Main Street where we're coming in and out, uh, highlighting the, uh, the building entrances with some pavers and, and things like that. At the top corner here, you might notice on the fifth floor that we push the uh, the wall in to create a balcony space that's accessed from um, an amenity fitness room that's up here. And then to reinforce that, we uh, change the window pattern below it to these large uh, large single fixed fixed pane glazed windows for those uh, for that area. Those of you might have picked up a little bit of articulation in the windows over here. They are Juliet balconies that are part of the program. And then back here, we have the, um, the parking area. This is the ground floor floor plan for orientation purposes. Main Street's on the right side of the sheet. L Street's on the far left and L Street extensions out across the top of the page. Here we can see the resident access uh, to the resident lobby with mail, elevator, stairs. Just above that is about 2,100 square feet of uh, commercial cafe space. 
This is not programmed yet. It's just a placeholder for uh, for whoever might be interested in leasing that. Also off of the lobby, um, there is an amenity space that is currently programmed for um, like a coffee bar lounge, um, open collaborative uh, business center, meeting spaces, uh, a leasing office, and there's uh, some utility space down here too. So also access from the lobby uh, at Main Street Elevation is uh, adored out to the parking field where we have 50 parking spaces. We have our trash uh, area up here in the upper left-hand corner, which is access from L Street with uh, rollout bins. We have a, a couple other utility uh, rooms uh, in strategic locations. We have space potentially for locked uh, bicycle storage along this area. And we have room for a, um, a U-Haul moving box truck of, of sort to pull in and then easy access to a second elevator and stair so that we don't tie up the primary elevator uh, on move in move out days. The residential floor plates uh, all stack for um, floors two through four. Uh, with approximately 25 units per floor, there are a mixture of studios of about 450 square feet on average, one bedrooms at 750 square feet on average, and then we have um, four two-bedroom units on each floor that are just a little over 1,000 square feet. They're all accessed off of a, a very typical um, double-loaded corridor running down the, uh, the spine of the building. The top floor uh, has one less unit. That's how we end up with 99 units. And the only difference is the upper corner where we have a fitness center and exterior balcony overlooking Main Street. All right, so I included this sheet because it's important to understand the restrictions of the site. Um, accessing the parking field from L Street on the, the lower right-hand corner of this drawing this is a uh, section, cross section through the building, and you can notice that L Street is significantly higher than Main Street. There's quite a bit of elevation change, about five and a half feet approximately. So we will be parking along the slope for the parking field. And this allows us to enter Main Street, go through the lobby, and uh, enter the parking field without a vertical transition of stairs or an elevator as well as uh, going from the parking field out to Main Street and making full use of both vertical circulation quarters in the building with the elevator in the main lobby, as well as the one that's located approximately here on the parking field. Also notice in the upper corner here, the, uh, the fitness center and uh, balcony space. And this is the last view of the building and evening um, rendering that highlights the building architectural lighting. We highlighted this corner uh, with these up-down lights to uh, accentuate these pilasters. We have under overhang lighting that's along Main Street here to uh, highlight and illuminate the uh, building entrances and sidewalk along Main Street. There would be lighting up in the uh, ceiling area of the balcony. And then we have this really interesting new light that's out on the market that it sits in the jam of the window and it just illuminates the jam of the window. So we're highlighting these large windows uh, in the evening um, and it should be pretty spectacular, I think. And then we have the, um, the garage parking lot lighting that you see in the back here with this glowing area. And that's my, my last sheet. So I'm wrapped up here and, and I can take any questions that you might have. It's a very sharp looking building and I think the presentation is spectacular. I actually um, think the location is fabulous as well and that was attorney Burke's first words out of his mouth. So I'm excited to see this project get underway. Um, Mr. May, the two outstanding comments that um, Scott addressed, were there any others that you're aware of? 
Um, no, Madam Chair, I believe those were the two outstanding, and I think that he will be able to um, uh, address those rather quickly. Um, and uh, conditional uh, approval should be uh, more than appropriate. I do want to say uh, we have been at this project for almost over a year, I'm sure. And I feel like a proud papa. <laughs> I can't, I can only imagine what the developer, Jerry Cavanaugh, um, feels about it. And he is here if you he would like to uh, address the group. Um, some of you may remember Jerry, he was the chief of staff for Senator Kennedy um, in Washington, and he's come back to do a lot of development in Southeast Mass. Mr. Kavanaugh. Well, thank, <clears throat> thank you very much, much uh, Madam Chairperson and Rob. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to work in Brockton and invest in Brockton. There's an enormous transformation taking place, and uh, we're thrilled to be a part of it. I uh, I was lucky enough to get a team of Jim, Scott, and Kevin, who uh, are eminently qualified to do this project for me. So we would hope with disapproval and others that uh, we will be in the ground in 2023. So thank you so much. Thank you. Um, one other question for Scott before I turn it over to the other board members. Are you aware that the parking authority must be, I guess, recorded with the registry of deeds before yes. the yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Questions from other board members? I've got a, a question and I think I know the answer to it. The sidewalk on that plan is congruent with what's in front of the uh, Sycamore building. It looks like, am I correct on saying that? Yes. Okay. All right. Other than that, I think you guys smacked it out of the ballpark. So great job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I concur. It, it's a fabulous plan. And I know they've been working on this a long time. And um, just the, the exterior detail on that is going to look unbelievable in the nighttime and daytime. So I don't, I don't have any questions here. Um, I really don't. So I'm, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, the, uh, if I could, one last thing. The lighting scheme is unbelievable with the the, the lights recessed into the window frame and the side lighting. I, you know, again, kudos to you guys on your plan and uh, look forward to seeing it get started. Uh, Madam yes, Chairwoman, if I could having... have just one last comment. Uh, uh, Section 27, uh, 100 of our ordinance requires a finding from the board uh, that the applicant has met the required fees and information in the applicable regulations, which we have. The proposed development as described meets all the requirements and standards of the article, design standards, or a waiver has been granted and we've requested specific waivers. And last, that extraordinary potential adverse impacts on the project on neighboring properties have been adequately mitigated. There will not be any impacts on the surrounding property. And uh, I thank you. I thank you for uh, allowing us to make the presentation. All right, thank you. Uh, Rob, Mr. May, open up to public comment. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who would like to make public comment, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. If you are calling in, please use star nine uh, to indicate that you would like to ask a question. And Madam Chair, I do not have any uh, audience attendee questions. Okay, so is there a motion? Madam Chair, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a question. Uh, are we, um, uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and approve this with uh, standard conditions plus the following conditions and necessary waivers, but I believe they've addressed the first one again. So I'm gonna ask for an edit on there. It's just final approval and then the temporary construction easement from the parking authority. Um, do we need to have that in there, Rob? I just wanted to. Um, it's, it's I don't think it been, needs to be yeah. a part of the approval, but they need it to get a building permit. Right. So. Obviously, and they know that, I'm sure. Yes, they do. Um, what about the waivers? Uh, we do. Yeah. We would want to approve with standard conditions and approve the waivers All right. uh, so, applied for. 
All right, so the applicant is requesting waivers from the following table of residential densi density allowances, section 27941, minimum lot area per dwelling unit, parking, section 27 96 uh, 1, minimum parking requirement, front setback design standard 8.7, rear setback design standard 8.7 an open space roof setback and site set side setback design standard 8.7. I think I got it all. Yes, you did, sir. All if right. that's a motion, I'll second that. The okay. motion. All in favor, Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. We thank the board for its time. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations, guys. Plan. Thanks thank very much, everyone. Good, Good luck, you, folks. Good night. Good night. Okay, is there are anything else for the agenda? If not, we will take a motion to adjourn. I do want to just remind the board and uh, those of you watching that our um, April meeting will be Thursday the 13th, um, uh, which is an unusual date for us, but uh, it's important. And we will be welcoming our next board member, Yolando on uh the, at the october meeting excuse me the march uh, meeting march 7th correct april march, oh march 7th no, march 7th march is 7th. next but april 13th is on a thursday for the april yes. all right motion next, to adjourn next month <laughs> is the um at collections for chairperson again that we have to do annually oh. just to keep that in the back of your mind excuse me is there anything else we need to come in to sign for Do you need anything signed? No, it's on the table now. Isaiah. Um, you guys had everything signed. So oh. we're good for now. You guys are all, you guys are all set for now. Okay, just Thank let you. us know. So Thank there, was you. So. there was a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All right, roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Good night, Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Good night. Nice to meet you. Have a good night, board. Nice to meet you all. Good night, y'all.